Welcome everyone to the February 15th meeting of the Housing and Economic Development Committee. Um, looks like we do have a quorum this evening. This evening. Um, we have a few people that weren't able to make it, uh, namely uh, Emma, Amy, and Tony. Uh, so to start the meeting, uh, the first agenda item is a follow-up on the project work uh, that we discussed working with the University of Massachusetts. Um, this afternoon, and I, I know you, you may or may not have had a chance to read through it, but they did write up a proposal, uh, and they're hoping that tonight, um, mainly for their, their records, um, they could get our group to agree in uh, principle and vote to accept um, their offer of assistance regarding the exercise to uh, envision what the Hampshire Mall property might look like. So uh, I can pull that up if people want to take a look at it. Will I be able to share my oh, host disabled screen sharing? No, it's, it's, it's enabled now. Oh, okay, right. That's one of my security measures for not having, uh, not getting Zoom bombed. Very smart. <laughs> okay. Um, so this letter came uh, via email. Uh, Tony Marulis forwarded it. So what they're doing is they're outlining the project description and scope. Um, you know, a lot of this is uh, just kind of a, a setting, if you will. They're setting the stage for what they're talking about, um, that the focus would be on the Hampshire Mall site which is owned by Pyramid Corporation. Um, again, for anybody who happens to be tuning in, um, this is a discussion where we approach the university as part of our uh, agreement uh, to strengthen town-gown relations. And given the fact that we don't have uh, a full-time economic development director or planner, um, nor does our planning department have the fiscal resources to do this sort of project work, at least at this time, the university has graciously agreed to allow their students to work on a project to uh, work out some schematic designs um, that might incorporate housing um, and, and whatever else they decide to do, specifically on that Hampshire Mall property. So, uh, you know, in the letter, you can see they're making it clear that they'll work cooperatively with Hadley officials, um, including both select and planning boards. Our group would be the point of contact for the project. Um, and then here they've outlined the project phases and deliverables. So you can see here kind of the background data gathering is from February through May. Same with the site design phase one. Architectural studio would happen in the spring uh, with a, a date to be announced there. And then over the summer and fall um, is when they would get into the economic uh, market analysis as well with the plan to deliver a final report um, at the end of the semester and in December timeframe. So uh, I mean, I think they did a nice job outlining everything. And I guess, uh, you know, does anybody have any questions, comments, concerns, anything that you would want us to go back to the university with? I'm not sure it's going back well, to the university. I'm go sorry, ahead. go ahead, Bill. I, I'm not sure it's going back to the university, but... Um, do we have Hampshire Mall on board with this too? Right. Yeah. Um, so I've reached out to Lynn a couple of times and have not been able to uh, get contact with her. I, I will I will stay at it though. Um, I know that Justin previously had a conversation with Lynn and you know, prior to us actually engaging with the university, just kind of at a high level conceptual, would they be interested? Um, there wasn't pushback, uh, and I think this group knows Lynn, Lynn has come in front of us before and indicated that they were open-minded to a discussion. <clears throat> so at this point, I, you know, I, I did bring that up with the university that I 
wanted to make sure we weren't doing anything that would cause any concern for Pyramid as the property owner. Uh, I think from their standpoint, they're really working with um, information that's a matter of public record. Um, the work that they're doing is conceptual in nature. It's not binding in any way. So I, you know, I believe that they're comfortable proceeding, but I, I do think certainly in the spirit of being a good neighbor, um, I definitely feel more comfortable having a direct conversation with Lynn. Uh, and so obviously this will get into their hands as well. And I'll, I'll add that um, in the conversation I had with Lynn, this was, I think, before I joined the Housing and Economic Development Committee, uh, <clears throat> she had pointed me to a press release about their Kingston, I think it was Kingston project. Um, they have a property there where they've done basically this this program. Uh, they incorporated mixed use residential, and she was explaining that they saw a market increase in foot traffic and um, sales and anchor tenant interests. So they, I think they are interested overall in this as a concept for property development. Um, but I agree with Molly; it'd be important for them to be partners here. And what um, to that uh, end, what we could do is, uh, you know, we we could take a vote tonight if people are comfortable to accept this um, contingent upon you know, having that conversation and, and buy-in from Hampshire Mall, um, if people would feel more comfortable that. I have no, no issue doing that. Okay. Chris, Chris, you Molly, oh, yes. Are we able to have a copy of this document? I would like to, uh, I can barely see it. Uh, yeah, I emailed it um, today, Crystal. Oh, you did? Okay. I haven't checked yeah. my email. No, that, and okay, that's I, I apologize you. for the, the lateness of getting it to people. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Yeah, I think it looks, uh, the, the proposal looks great to me. It, um, it gives us the opportunity as well to get um, some important info from UMass um, in terms of their plans. I mean, I was just, I, I have even though I only live, you know, a mile away. Um, I just looked at some of the numbers. I didn't realize they've increased um, the number of students over the last 10 years by 30%. And um, I just wonder what their, if they have any plans, um, if, if, or I don't know if you guys know of any, um, as far as that goes, are they going to continue to increase at that rate? Um, and are they, do they have any other um Obviously, they have they have their own little housing shortage mm -hmm. for for their students, and I just wonder, you know, what if they if they're going to try to do anything about it, um, build more? They just opened up the uh, the big complex at the end of Lincoln Street. There, I don't know how many that holds, um, but that's full now, right? That that's so. Yeah, and I think that Lincoln Street project actually was a P three project, so public private partnership. And if well, I was. remember right, yes. um, that's a a first foray into that delivery model for the Amherst campus. So it, it seems like they're, you know, they're limited to how many students they can house on campus and are starting to explore those kinds of opportunities too, which I think is probably why they're interested in this project. So that's on a public land, but it's a private <laughs> co company that owns it. So that isn't those students who go in there aren't, don't go through the, um, the on-campus yeah. housing or do they? No, so it's I don't, I don't know that private lease. Structured. No, go ahead, Sean. It's a, it's a, it is a private lease. So you so those are mostly juniors and seniors then probably in there. Or uh wealthy lower classmen, most likely from out of country. Oh yeah. I gotcha. Yeah. Because I know the company they uh they pitched it to the athletic department uh for them to house some athletes and uh the athletic department told them that they were out of their minds, what they were charging for the leases. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. Jeez, the, the leases are pretty high all around. I, I know that housing, you know, just the housing leases are pretty high. So they must have really been. Well, no, they, it's just it's market rate, which the university doesn't pay market rate because they have their own facilities. I gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, and, it, and again, just to reiterate, the, the intent of the project for you, 
the universities to give their students in the, in the LARP, um, the Landscape Architecture and Regional Planning Program, live experiential learning, you know, so that, that these are projects that they rotate through. Um, yeah, housing is a, a huge topic of conversation here. So whether it's for students or faculty, staff, you know, they were very clear about that. Um, that to, to your point, Mark, I think for everybody in the area, all employers, um, it's, a, it's a big topic of conversation. So uh, to the extent they can, you know, provide us with kind of just a something to look at, you know, is, yep. is worthwhile. One thing I I didn't see in that proposal, um, they they talk about a, you know, the economic impacts and um, development uh, portion, but they don't list an economist in there, and I I just wondered there, um, I don't know to the extent that they're connected in with the econ department over there, um, no. but the uh, again that the, it looks like the um, someone from the landscape architecture school will be heading the econ development uh, assessment. Yeah, because I think it's a combination with the regional planning as well. Oh, I got you. Oh, the, oh yeah, the regional planning department, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that, that should be all right. Mm -hmm. I can uh, touch base with them. Mm -hmm. So there's actually no act location of where they want to build this besides the mall in general. Right. This is an exercise for the students to just take a look at what's there now, Crystal, right. um, and just come up with uh -huh. design ideas. So it's it's not a proposal for any actual building. OK, right? they're they're just going through the exercise to help us imagine what a different type of development probability on the parcel. of having something there. OK, I see. I see. All right. And, yeah, and so they're going to bring up studio. a uh, it's a joint studio between architecture department and landscape architecture, regional planning. So there's some aspect of site analysis and site development strategies. And then the architecture students will typically take on an architectural solution to try and figure out, you know, what kind of typology is it? What does it look like? And it's, you know, it is conceptual, but um, between those two uh, studios tackling this together, we'll get kind of like a macro scale site analysis and then a more I hate to cut it micro scale, but a smaller scale um, sort of building analysis. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Do they need to know like um, uh, what portion of the mall that they might be putting this in? I mean, are they going to, are, are we telling them to look at the entire mall as a redevelopment? Are we, or, I mean, that might, that might be a problem with the owners of the mall. Maybe the owners of the mall envision, you know, target staying and JP, JC Penny probably not, right? I mean, yeah. So I, the conversation I had with the Pyramid that's Group, that. and it would be important for them to weigh into this when they get involved. They they basically said the JC Penny side of the mall has been underperforming. They have a few long term leases there, but there wouldn't be too much difficulty in relocating them. Uh, and I believe Molly, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, Stephen Schreiber is the architecture program uh, chair there at UMass. Said that they were going to do two versions of the project. I think they were doing one. Um, where they don't remove any of the mall and one where they remove just the JC Penney side to see what the general impact of both would be. Yeah. In the proposal, it said three options. Yeah. Uh, I think maybe. they were percentage based, Justin. Okay. Right. I think it was like, um, if they were to, to, to keep, keep the, all existing in place and then remove or, or, you know, kind of, um, yeah, re remove and rebuild, like, and I don't remember the exact percentages. I want to say like 20% um, and 50% or something like that. Just to, again, give the, I guess they, they break the kids out in kids, I'm sorry, that these young adults who are the future, <laughs> future of our country, um, they, they break the groups out into teams. And, and so there would be three you know, one group would be working on the keep it as is, one with a specific percentage reduction, and then a third with the other, whatever the other instruction is. So it's more like a project, and each group is assigned a different portion of the project. Yep, or a different, a different, different version, different version, 
project. Version, yeah. yeah, different version, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's might, going to be interesting. Might need to just fill them in. The uh, the mall is not as monolithic as it appears. Uh, Target actually owns mm -hmm. its little piece of Hadley Heaven. Mm -hmm. uh, they they require a deeded parcel, which is basically their footprint in their parking field. So that is um, separate and apart. I'm sure there are all sorts of cross deed provisions in there, but Target uh, Pyramid was willing to sell Target the dirt to get them as a tenant. So okay. that um, will probably have some effect. It certainly changes on the penny side would not impact Target, but... Uh, yeah, that's a, that's a great point, Bill. And I think that's that's one of the more important parts of this proposal is the recognition that there needs to be a dialogue with the select board and planning board for that very reason. You know, there's things that they might not know. Um, and I think it also gives us an opportunity to talk about some of the priorities outlined in the master plan, like preserving open space, agricultural heritage. I want to make sure that those are aspects of the students' projects or at least part of their site analysis so that they're not ignoring what's important to Hadley in generating solutions for Hadley. I'm eager to see how this goes, how how it looks, because when you see when you when you envision J C Penney's, it's really a small area, um, and then they have the parking lot around all of it, which kind of takes up most of the room. So I would I'm I would love to see what. Yeah, well, I think I think the university is just looking um, looking to us for you know permission to continue with the project. Um, so, are people comfortable um, just having our committee vote uh, tonight? And then, obviously, this will be an ongoing dialogue. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd say yes with yes. the contingency that. Uh, you know, Pyramid Group has offered the opportunity to contribute. Mm -hmm. Agreed okay. with that. Okay, yeah. so that's a motion on your part, Justin, then? I'll yeah, second. I'll make that. I'll, I'll have a motion, okay. too, as well. Okay, with Pyramid input, yeah. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Let Aye. me ask Anybody? a question. Let me ask mm -hmm. a question. What about Planet Fitness? Is is that because I'm I'm wondering? Okay, they've mentioned J C Penney, um, but is that the only area they're going to um, look into and in, in architect, or is it? I don't know. So the J when I said J C Penney side, and I, I don't want to talk for Pyramid Group, so just understand this was a conversation I had with one of their managers. Um, the J.C. Penney side of the mall, meaning that entire half of the mall off of food, food court, is really underperforming oh. from what I hear. So the um, the long term leases that she was mentioning was Planet Fitness and J.C. Penney. I think both hold long term leases, and it sounded like that wouldn't necessarily be a problem to relocate, especially in the context of a mixed use development. I would imagine Planet Fitness would do better in a space that had more um, street presence or more access to foot traffic. Yeah. Right. Okay. Now, now I'm getting a broader range of what I'm envisioning. Thank you. And there's some other properties in there that are empty right now, right? The old, uh, what was it the old pub that was in there years ago? There's been nothing in there for a long time. Yeah. What was that ground ground round? Ground, that ground, ground round. round. Right. Right. Um, in that whole side, like they say, that it's a very, you know, not down. a happening side of the mall there. No. So that just makes me wonder. You say you say they're going to do percentages. They're going to do like a twenty percent, a fifty percent. What was the other one? Do you know? I, I don't think leave everything else as is. Leave it as walk, is. Walk around, yeah. And so, what what would be involved with leave it, leave it is? If I was one of the um, students, I wouldn't want to get that. You know, that doesn't sound like a very interesting topic for a student. Leave as is. I think that would be infill around the footprint of the mall right. as opposed to taking a part of the mall. So they'd be utilizing the parking lots. And I would imagine there'd be 
maybe a structured parking solution or you know something to deal a solution that would have to deal with the limited footprint that they'd have available i guess i'm confused what what would be the point if it was leave it is what would there be housing going in somewhere if they were leaving as is because they're working with the whole parcel mark so right. that they so would they're be reimagining it they're reimagining they're they're imagining buildings where the parking is now then you're saying if that's what they come up with i, I get that <laughs> okay yeah you gotta get their creative juices flowing so okay all right so if there's nothing else on that then um the next agenda topic tonight uh has to do with the housing forum so uh, I guess the snag that we ran into, um, we had secured dates, a location, um, all the municipal uh, speakers were lined up, but we're running into difficulty, it sounds like, getting uh, a commitment from the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. So, mm -hmm. Bill, I don't know, um, did you guys meet last night? Did you have PVC on? or No, we uh, were meeting next Tuesday. Okay. Um, so the part part of the issue is the uh, <clears throat> when we started working with Ken Comia, he was the new guy, mm -hmm. and he he got the assignment to work with the uh, local planning boards, and they've picked up more business from other communities as well, and now he's the assistant manager of the section, wow. and um, is much busier than he was when he started. And in fact, they have hired new people who are working with us directly. We haven't actually seen him for a month or so. Um, unfortunately, the new people don't have any real experience to contribute at this point. And um, you know, Ken had worked on the housing production plan with us. He came in after we had done the update to the master plan. So he did not have any role in uh, developing the update to the master plan. So he, I, he may be able to talk about it to some extent, but he really doesn't have a major contribution in that area. So uh, <clears throat> I did have an email to him with uh, just trying to gauge his uh, otherwise his availability and whether there are nights that are just booked out. I know, for example, for like three years, he booked the first Tuesday of every month for Hadley Planning Board. Right. So um, I, I'm not sure how booked he is, uh, but that was the what he raised the last time that uh, the the date, the follow up date for the question Q and A. What, he was available, but the main presentation date, he was committed to another community. So I'll uh, I'll keep trying to get a sense of what, what works for him. Okay. And wasn't there, um, um, I apologize because I'm drawing a blank on her name, but I thought that he worked with somebody else on the housing production plan from PVPC. I don't recall. I wasn't working on that. Okay. I can go back through my emails. I, I know that there was somebody else. I'm on, I'm thinking the name Lauren. Um, I'll go back through my emails and see, and I, I can get you her name, Bill, just in case if you're talking to Ken, if she might be able to plug in just because she at least had some involvement with the production plan. In the absence of either of those two, which probably would be the best suited, um, would we be open to someone who wasn't involved in the production of that, but may have the data and be able to articulate what it means without necessarily having been involved in gathering it? Uh, I, I'm fine with that, but I don't know, Bill, you're the one with the most experience with uh, PVC. I, uh, I guess it all, all depends on who. Mm -hmm. If if you have someone in mind, uh, we can think about it. Um, my concern is that I think we, 
that seems to be an awful deep dive. Um, I'm not sure we have to go that far. Um, especially in this round, I think we're going to have to do this again mm -hmm. when we are closer to being able to do something about it. Right now, this is good timing for an educational build up to the Springtown meeting, but we don't have anything on the um, uh, on the warrant housing related for Springtown meeting. Right. So I think it's fine to roll this out once, um, maybe keep it on a, you know, not, not the 50,000 foot level, but maybe the 10,000 foot level and not get into the weeds of implementation because we have no proposals in front of us. Um, so I think that may inform us on who, who would be a good speaker. Um, having said that, I'll, I'll, I'll see if I can find, uh, I'll see if what Ken's availability is. I know he would be more available by Zoom probably than in person, but um, I don't know how that ties in with how everyone is envisioning how this presentation would go. I think we were planning on doing a hybrid. Um, so I don't, I don't see any reason why that couldn't work. As a matter of fact, um, when we thought we were going to be doing it on the 29th um, of February, the superintendent and McKenzie had said that she could participate, but it would have to be via Zoom. Um, okay. and that, that seemed to have been fine. So. All right. Okay. So, Bill, can we task you with that then? Yep. I'll, uh, I'll reach out to Ken again. Okay. Um, any update on uh, affordable housing or anything in that realm? Uh, well, sure. We uh, did get a grant from Pioneer Valley Planning Commission to develop a 40R zoning district. Um, I think it's a $7,500 grant, which basically means they will give us $7,500 of additional staff time than we're already getting. Um but focused on a 40R housing district. Um, and coincidentally, we're we're looking at focus. I, I think our preference would be to focus on the Mountain Farms Mall and the Hampshire Mall. Uh, mm -hmm. The um, An earlier iteration of it that uh, uh, Ken had presented in consultation with uh, the powers that be in Boston was looking at the um, the whole mall areas. The um, uh, on the north side of Route Nine from uh, Lowe's to Home Depot, and on the south side of Route Nine, Mountain Farms Mall and Hampshire Mall. Um, I think we're we're inclined to look at a smaller district and see what it looks like. Right now, we've spent an inordinate amount of time talking about the concept but we don't actually have a, you know, 10 page bylaw that implements the concept. So mm -hmm. that's what we hope to accomplish through this grant. And it has a, um, unfortunately they weren't, weren't awarded until early February and they're supposed to be wrapped up um, uh, in by December 31st. So it's going to be tight, but um, it's um, it's doable, I guess. It, it's it, it, we're not I want to be very careful to say we're not adopting what Northampton and or Amherst have adopted per se, but there have been a lot of communities that have been down this road before. So we do not have to reinvent the wheel to come up with a, a structure. But right now we don't really have any idea what the structure would look like. So, you know, to some extent, it's nice to have the visioning going on a parallel track with the uh, UMass visioning of what the malls might look like just to get a sense of what we, 
what where we might be when we end up with it when we get at the other end of this so okay. if anything comes out of it we would anticipate probably looking at the spring 2025 annual town meeting okay. um and um that would be the earliest right that'd be the earliest yeah and um you know i just to add that it's not like we have anyone beating down our doors to say they want to do a 40R or uh, they want to be part of a 40R. Uh, it's one of those, if, if we build it, they may come or may not. Uh, that's something you can mention that a couple of communities with 40R districts that have adopted 40R districts don't have any developer interest in putting anything there. So mm -hmm. we'll see how that plays out. So is does this it have separate to be? From... Go ahead, Crystal. Sorry. Is this separate from the O'Connell Lodge? I'm getting a little confused here. Yes. Yeah, we, we would. Okay. Uh, the O'Connell Lodge could be part of it. But for technical reasons, the O'Connell Lodge is on its own track. They okay. have... They have their administrative approval to proceed. The ZBA has been overruled and they can proceed without regard to what we do with 40R. Oh, okay. And it's and probably what, and, and what you're talking about with the mall, what what is that? It's in a sense, it's building on what we just talked about with the UMass study. We right. are looking at the possibility of whether uh, whether we can devise a regulatory plan, a set of written bylaws that would allow for some adaptive reuse of the mall property. For housing. For housing. 40R in, in absolutely oh. includes housing. Um, right. Okay. It was two separate that, things. Okay. No matter how clever the designs are that UMass might come up with for possible reuse of the property, if they are not conforming to Hadley zoning, it's just a pie in the sky exercise. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. So while what we're trying to do from the planning board side is come up with a regulatory structure that will allow something like that to happen. Mm -hmm. And we want to do it now because from a planning perspective, uh, Planning is a very crude tool. You can say what, what can go here, what can't go here, but uh, it takes a long time to make it happen. So if we, and it's a big if, because it still has to go through town meeting. If we want to encourage the possibility of building residential property and mixed use, mixed use property, residential and commercial property on a parcel such as the Mountain Farms Mall or the Hampshire Mall. Um, we, if, we're, if we want to encourage it, we have to create the structure and get it to town meeting. Mm -hmm. And um, And we're over a year away from being ready to do that at this point. So if we had a developer come into town and propose an absolutely miraculous combination of affordable housing, market rate housing, and stores, we wanted to buy the mall property from Pyramid, completely redevelop it, they couldn't because we don't have regulations that would permit that. Mm -hmm. well, if, I, if I could, Bill, it 
correct me if I'm wrong in my understanding of this, they could if they applied for a variance with the zoning board, right? Or the um, zoning board of appeals. Technically, but the ZBA would have no business granting them a variance because that is limited to issues regarding topography, soil condition, and lot shape that are unique to the property being sought for a variance and uh, not common to other uh, properties in the area. The standard is so high that, yes, probably 90% of the variances that are granted shouldn't be granted. And, um, but if there's no appeal, then you have legal spot zoning. But that is not a, you can't take that to the bank. Um, and uh, there is occasional talk about re, uh, lowering that standard, but um, at present it is what it is. And um, there, there's just, it, it, it's not an option in Hadley. And it shouldn't be an option in most communities. You may get away with it in some communities if no one appeals. Hmm. Thank you. That, that does help. I do have a, a question for you, Bill, on the 40R piece. Um, and for, I guess, for those who don't or aren't familiar with what 40R specifically does, like in broad brush strokes, it, it's a smart growth district. So you create higher density. There's a, a higher degree of affordability requirements than would typically be required of a a town and then there's also financial benefits uh, to both i think developers and the town um, when you were talking with pioneer valley planning commission bill um, are they are they performing a study to determine like what kind of economic return we would see for that or is this strictly just a visioning exercise for what the boundary of that district might look like and how we might write the zoning language i think they'll have to do some um economic review, but I think we're primarily looking for um, what what we would have to do to enable such a district. And we're looking specifically at Hampshire Mall and Mountain Farms Mall because we do not want to, um, don't want to break new ground. We want to uh, look at adaptive reuse of existing properties on the Route 9 corridor. Um, could it be broader? It might be. Uh, we might extend it as far down as campus, uh, not uh, Campus Center Drive. Um, um, Westgate? Westgate Center Drive. Um, although there's a lot of wet in there, which begs the question of whether we it's worth even Creating a district that you can't build in because of external constraints doesn't really get us anywhere either. Does the district have to be contiguous or can it be in It does not locations? have to be contiguous. And some other communities are doing it as, um, they're, they're doing multiple districts. So those are both options. Mm -hmm. um, I think Northampton uh, was explained to me they were doing it sort of on a per project basis. Um, get a someone accumulates ten, has ten acres they want to do okay you're a forty yard district and now someone else has five acres okay you're a forty yard district. Um, so that's something. Those are some of the details we'll get into as we get further into it. Uh, just a follow-up question, Bill, on the economic side. Uh, the most common thing I hear about new developments is the sewer capacity. And I know that you know, with residential, you have significantly more toilets and showers and whatnot. So um, I'm curious if the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission will be, you know, in, the, in the economic analysis of this, will they be able to just kind of give like a thumbs up, thumbs down on whether the financial incentives from 40R to the town could potentially offset improvements to infrastructure like sewers? We'll, um, 
certain we can certainly ask for that uh, functionally i don't think anything's going to get off the ground unless and until there is a successful negotiation with Amherst to connect the Route 9 corridor or parts of the Route 9 corridor to the um, regional sewer treatment plant. So that might be, even if we get something in the, on the books in 25, that could be another couple of years off. Um, I do understand that there are sufficient advances in sewer treatment technology that the current plant probably could handle more or could be rebuilt to handle more capacity without increasing its footprint. But um, functionally, it's the sewer capacity was an argument that was used to um, oppose a proposed rezoning for senior housing off of Middle Street. And, uh, it, and honestly, it's, it's, a, it's a real issue. So uh, the more densely, uh, the greater density we might be looking at does carry a uh, increased flow capacity and um, we may not be able to address that in, um, internally or within Hadley, but yeah, that, that's great information. I think mostly what I'd like to see is, you know, when eventually, if this goes to town vote, um, you know, the the standard responses are always, you know, with the sewer capacity, the school system, you know, the, the, it's kind of like the same five things come up every time. It'd be great if this proposal was accompanied with enough information for people to understand whether or not there is or isn't an impact in those regards. Mm -hmm. Well, we haven't even had the, our first meeting with yeah. EVPC to talk about how we are, are going to go about it. Um, I did, uh, we, we may, we definitely have PVPC on the agenda for this coming meeting uh, next Tuesday, the 20th. Um, we are working on planning board rules and regulations. Uh, I did send an email to Ken asking if he would be there. And if he was, could we start talking about the uh, the grant and how we're going to tackle it? Alternately, our next meeting is March 5th. We had some public hearings scheduled, but the town clerk pointed out that that is the state primary day. So uh, we cannot hold public hearings on the... Um, on the 5th. So we're trying to see if we can get PVPC back and then have our public hearings bumped up to the third Tuesday of the month. So um, we'll definitely be looking, talking with PVPC on Tuesday and possibly the following um, first meeting of March. I look forward to hearing how this, uh, how this evolves. It sounds like a, a promising, step forward yeah we're it's, it's grant funded and it's a step we weren't going to be able to take otherwise so uh it, it's it's motion so we've canceled uh, have we canceled yet for the uh for two thursdays from today yeah i let i let the people who are planning on speaking um no, and, and knowing we were going to have this meeting tonight with our group. Um, so I just basically put them on notice to um, that we'd be back in touch to try to schedule future dates. Um, but this time we'll start with PVPC and then try to backfill with everybody else. You included, Mark, since you're one of the <laughs> presenters. Yeah, just a reminder that, uh, you know, the next bunch of Tuesdays, except the one over our spring break, um i my whole tuesday is filled up but yeah i think um for the senior center availability they lean heavily into thursday availability thursday night works i'm done at uh, around noon on on thursday i can be here by okay. one 
Yeah, so I think that's what we're we're trying for. Otherwise, we may have to do it like on a on an off select board Wednesday or something like that. That Wednesday would work too. So either either one. Okay. Okay. Anything else about um, affordable housing? Okay, and I think that's all really we had for the agenda tonight, unless there's anything that was unforeseen that anybody needs to raise or a request for future agenda items. I just have a question on the economic development side. Um, how did Hadley use the ARPA funds that it got? Um, so since that's not on the agenda, can't get into it. But I believe okay. our town treasurer has a lovely multi-year spreadsheet okay. <laughs> that breaks a lot of that apart. Um, in in part, uh, a, a large, um, I, I want to say 800000 or so, um, there was some backfilling of, of taxes. Um, so all, all of the ARPA funds effectively at this point have been utilized, Sean. Um, but I'm happy. I know that Linda has given the select board that presentation, so I can I can get that from her and um, bring that to the the group for their, our next meeting. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? I would just say I wonder if it's uh, kind of worth it to to. Um try to advance the sewer issue um it, it sounds like that's going to be sort of the thing that's going to hold us up um mm -hmm. and so if there's some way that we can be part of uh of of moving that forward to the to the hookup with amherst um it, it, it doesn't appear that this group would have particularly much role in that but but if that's going to be the thing bill you were saying two years on that um you know that sounds like a, a major roadblock. Well, I was I, I have no idea where those negotiations stand. I was just saying that we're almost at two years to get a 40 R district in front of town meeting. I get you. We're talking May of 2025 at the earliest. So but Mark, I can I can get an update from Scott McCarthy, our DPW director. So the last I left off, I know that there was a um, grant response that they were waiting for back in January. I, th I think that that came through, but I'm not articulate on what that means, like what that next phase is. So um, either I can ask Scott to attend the meeting or, or at least get an update from him. Probably that'd be enough, an update, yeah. Okay. Um, Molly, did you have any information you wanted me to bring to the DEI? Only anything that you think is relevant from our conversations, Crystal? I mean, I, I think DEI would be interested in the whole 40R zoning. I mean, that's really the first, as Bill's saying, major step forward on the part of the town to change zoning in any meaningful way. Um, okay. it, it, in a long time, I guess is what I what I mean, you know. So, to to the extent the DEI committee is is interested in, in housing, as I know that you are, um, maybe maybe letting them know about that. I can let them know. I have a meeting with them tonight. I have a meeting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just bring information to them. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mark Mark Dunn is aware that. We received the grant. Okay. It came in after our last meeting. It came in between meetings, but I shared it with everyone. Um, so they every everyone on the planning board knows of it. Okay. But um, that's about all. You know, as, as I I outlet lie out, outlined a path forward, but we really haven't had any discussion with PBPC about how it wants to 
structure the path forward? I think that's what I will wait for. More information um, to bring to the DEI as far as the direction and, and once that meeting is held, Bill. I mean, I, like you said, you've already told Mark about the grant, but I mean, if there isn't any more information to provide as far as stability, I'd rather wait until we have a little more meat for the pie instead of just a little bit of the crust, you know? Yep. I like that expression. Oh, <laughs> thank you. I don't, I don't think I've heard that one before. That's great. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> Everyone likes a full pie. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, unless anybody has anything else tonight, motion to somebody want to make a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. So moved. Third. That's the close <laughs> thing. Okay. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. See everybody next month. Take care. Have a great Take care. Thank you. Bye bye. My, my new Robert's uh, rules of order workaround is to say, does anybody object to uh, adjourning? It works. See you, Bill. Good night.